Part two of Oilers TV playoffs presented by Sport Check as we get set to take a look at the Anaheim Ducks. Tom Gazzola with Gene Principe from Sportsnet. Gino, you hit on it on part one that the Ducks took off for Kelowna for a couple of days. Uh, that was a topic of conversation naturally around uh, the media the last two days. Uh, what do you make of that move to, to take the team out of town, get them out of the bubble, so to speak, in Edmonton? You know what? I think it's a great decision, and it played in perfectly for the Anaheim Ducks. First of all, it's, a, it's an early game, and so you can get out of town uh, earlier than you might on an 8.30 start that potentially goes to overtime. Now you've got your guys traveling, you know, 1 or 2 in the morning when really they should be going to bed or having their final meal before they hit the sack. Instead, you get out of here. You probably land in Kelowna by 10 o'clock. It's a 15-minute ride to your hotel, and you're in bed almost as early as you might might have been if you had stayed in Edmonton. And then there's the fact, listen, anyone who's been in this building, around this building, around the city, it's it's everywhere, right? right. It's duck season, it's orange crush, it's, it's everything about the Oilers. And so I like the idea, because they're a veteran team, to get them away. This doesn't make them relax like they're on holidays for the rest of the playoffs. They understand that this is a, a respite, a couple of days to get away, to focus on the team and not worry about the opposition. If you had a younger team, I, I think it might be a different case. You might want them immersed in what they're involved in as right. opposed to taking them away. So good decision. Uh, they did it in 2015 against Calgary. They went to Banff between games three and four. They won. So there is some history, recent history on that. So I can understand why they're doing it again to see if they can succeed in the same manner. You think that uh, Oilers fans might have played some tricks on the Ducks in, in the hotel by any chance? I know we've heard it before. Do you recall a time of something like that happening before? You know what? I have seen it done uh, in the CFL and I've seen it done in the NHL. And, and I mean, it gets to the point where fans... They want to be involved, and right. they want to bother the other team any way they can, whether it's you know getting your morning cup of coffee and being a barista saying, you know, <laughs> have a great day when you, you've put in you know sour milk instead of uh, you know regular milk Almond into milk their coffee. Yeah, something like low that. Low-fat skim it's, milk, it's, something like that. It's all, it's all fun and games. Yeah. Now, it depends how you take it. I'm not sure you'd want to do that to Ryan Kessler, but you might do it to Cam Fowler because he seems to be a more easygoing guy. Listen, Anaheim has built a veteran club that, uh, to me, reminds me a little bit of Vancouver a few years ago. The core is not getting any younger. The window is starting to close. They've brought back a coach who had recent history and won the Stanley Cup in 2007. They're pushing for it. They won five straight Pacific Division titles, but in the end, it means nothing in June when you're at the golf course or you're sunning yourself on the beach. So they've built themselves to be good for a couple of years, and those couple of years are getting a little closer to ending. I don't mean it's over for Anaheim, but if they lose to the Edmonton Oilers in this series, it's another big disappointment for them. I love when you put the Italian pronunciation on words. So we're going to go to the Ducks <laughs> room right now to hear from them. It was nice to, to get away and uh, you know just to just to, to be together and and uh, have a couple days to yourself. It, it, it was nice. Well, obviously, we felt it was important to, to take a little bit of a break. Uh, we had an optional skate on Monday and. Uh, there was more coaches out on the ice than there was players, so I guess the coach, uh, the, the players enjoyed the time away. Well, we feel pretty good. I mean, we know it's a tough series. Um, you know, we don't uh, pay too much attention to what you know what's behind us, or we're just looking at what's going to happen tonight. Well, it's the biggest game of the year for us. Um, you know, every every game's that every game that we've been playing, it's the next one's the biggest one, and. You know, you, you don't want to fall in a 3 one hole, so we got to be ready right from the start. It's, it's a loud crowd, but obviously scoring a, a, a quick goal helps a little bit. But I think I think it's tough to completely get the crowd out of it. They're always going to be in there and always going to give them a little bit of an energy boost. But uh, I mean, we got to just make sure that we get off the good start. Don't don't get them anything to feed off early. So uh, I mean, but the crowd is always going to be there. But it's it's something we're used to, and we're just going to have to kind of embrace it. We're not relying on one person to do everything for our group. What we're relying on is, is that we have a, a structure and a game plan that we put in place and that we need to execute to the highest possible level and make less mistakes than the Edmonton Hockey Club does. The Anaheim Ducks making the most of their time in the Okanagan, uh, spending a day and a half in Kelowna. Gino, uh, some lineup concerns when it comes to the Ducks. We know that Kevin Bieksa is out. Uh, Randy Carlisle saying he won't be back until later in the series. I suppose we're starting to get towards later in the series. And now all of a sudden, Patrick Eves is doubtful. How does that affect things? 
Well, I think it's it's a big impact. First of all, you lose uh, Bieksa, and he's one of those players that has some of that Stanley Cup experience, nearly won one with the Vancouver Canucks. And Patrick Eves, one of the great trade deadline pickups uh, from the Dallas Stars, he really has inserted himself successfully into the lineup. But if Corey Perry replaces him on that line, and he's reunited with Ryan Getzlaff, that, that concerns me. Corey Perry has not had anywhere near the kind of season uh, people are accustomed to seeing from him, a former 50-goal scorer. Listen, he's, he's sneaky, he's dirty, uh, but you'd love to have him on your team. And the thing is this, he can still score goals. And if he can get reconnected with Ryan Getzlaff, that's a concern for me. Not that having Patrick Eves out of the lineup is a bad thing for the Oilers, but just having Perry and Getzlaff together, it would concern me a bit that he, they might find that magic they used to have. Absolutely, and uh, if Eves should not go, we expect Andre Kasha to step into the lineup. All right, Gene, uh, grazie bello. Hey, piacere, Always, piacere. Hey, good to have you on. Yeah. Uh, that does it for Gene. In part three, we bring in Kelly Bookberger and Ron Lowe.